In this video, I'll show you everything you need to know about Runway's Gen 3 image to video. I've created a ton of videos using this feature and there are some surprising results. Plus, I'll share some tips and tricks that you won't want to miss. And I'll show you an awesome hack which I found by accident. Okay, let's get into it. So I'm testing Runway's Alpha Gen 3 image to video. And it's exactly what you think it is. You take an image or a photo and turn it into a video. Now you might be thinking, why do I need to use image to video when I can just create video with a prompt? And there are tons of reasons why you would want to do image to video. So for example, if you want to create a story with the same look throughout it, then you can create your starting images for each sequence and then put them into image to video, then stitch them all together and you should have a cohesive video with the same look and style throughout it. Whereas if you did this with text to video, you would probably have different looking shots in each video. I've broke this video up into chapters and each chapter will focus on a different aspect of image to video. So to start off, I want to show you how an image works without a prompt and with a prompt. So I'm on the Gen 3 page here and I'll just chuck in a random image that I've created. So I have this weird looking image of this man with his mouth open here. For this one, I'm going to add no prompt to see what kind of video Runway makes. So I'll make it five seconds, click generate. And for the next video, I'll add a prompt with the image just to see how Runway deals without and with a prompt. I'll try a weird prompt for this one. So I've put in sausages fall on the man's head and the results are really interesting. So let's compare them. The video without any prompt is just doing a kind of zoom into the face. It still looks pretty good. It's got some realistic motion to the face. So you can always just put in an image and leave it without any prompt and it should do something with it. I've tested loads of images before and Runaway does like to kind of just zoom into images if you don't put any prompt. So this could be a default motion that they usually use if you don't put any prompt. <laughs> and here is the one with sausages falling on him. And it is really weird, but it's incredibly realistic with the physics falling on his face and he even changes his mouth movement. I don't know where this video could be used, but it's still an interesting test. Now let's have a look at creating green screen effects. You have most likely seen this effect before, but using image to video on green screen effects works really, really well as you get to choose what is in the green screen footage instead of typing something in and hoping that it comes out okay. There are different ways on how you can get green screen footage. So I like to use this website called Vecteezy and then search for an image that you want to use. I use the PNG option here and I make sure to put the license type as free here just to filter out all the paid options. And then from here, you just download it. You can take it into photo editing software and put a green screen background behind it. I like to use this free software called Photopea. So I just take the PNG, place it in there, and then use the paint bucket tool to turn the background green. I'll then save this and take it into Runway. And once in Runway, you can either choose to give it a prompt, but I'm going to leave it blank for this one. And click Generate. And now I've got an awesome video of the moon spinning with a green background. And then you can download your file and then use a keying tool to remove that green background and then place it anywhere in your footage. As you can see, I've added this moon up here and it looks pretty good. And here are a few more little effects that I've added in this shot as well. So I've got some fire here, which looks awesome. You can make any custom design with a green background and do the same thing. I wanted to create an animated title for Atomic Gains. I got ChatGPT to generate this image of the Atomic Games logo. I asked it to put some lightning bolts around it. And then I used a remove background tool and then put a green screen behind it. Then I imported it into Runway and these are the results I got. I think they look awesome. Now what's good about this is Runway looks at the image and it noticed there was some electric bolts. So it's animated those and it's done an awesome job. So this is a way on how to create your own motion graphics. And here's a few more. So we have one with fire. And again, it's noticed that there is flames around the text. So it creates a flame like animation around it. And I created this one in Canva. So I just typed out atomic gains. I put some lightning bolts around it using Canva elements and made sure there was a green screen background and it's done an awesome job. So hopefully you can see this is really powerful on how to create your own motion graphics and you get a lot of control on how it looks. If you're enjoying this content, please consider liking this video and subscribing to our channel. 
This graphic you can see on screen was used during the techniques I just talked about, which I think looks pretty awesome. Continuing with visual effects, now let's have a look at taking your personal photos and turning them into videos. This is probably my favorite way to use Gen 3's image to video, as you can create some Hollywood looking effects with your own personal photos. I find this really special as your own photos are very personal and you can create some awesome looking videos and share them with family members and friends. So for this first one, I've actually got a hack that I found by accident. I'm using this photo of a castle that I took. The picture that I took is a vertical one, but when you upload images into image to video it only allows widescreen 16x9 images. So if you place in a vertical image, you have to crop into it. But what I did for this one is I took the image into Canva and I placed two black bars by the side to make it look like a widescreen image. And I was curious to see what Runaway would do with it. I gave it the prompt of fire and smoke emerge from the castle and it gave me a really interesting result. So as you can see from the starting frame, it has the black on either side, but when I press play, Runway has generated the sides for me and added some incredible looking smoke and fire coming from the castle. This blew my mind because now I can take all my vertical images, place it into Runway, and it will generate those areas for me. This is great if you don't want to crop any of the image, as sometimes you like to have all of the image in there. It's done an incredible job with getting the smoke and the fire to make it look realistic. If I saw this video, I would actually think that a castle is on fire. And as you can see, it's added some shadow onto the castle. It just looks very, very realistic. And with this photo I took of some old buildings, I wanted some water crashing over the buildings and it's added in an incredibly realistic looking simulation of water bursting in between the buildings. This is really impressive as if you try to make this simulation with software, it would probably take hours for it to render and kind of calculate where everything goes. But this did it under a minute, which is just mind blowing to be honest. And to do this with your own photos is a pretty awesome. And here's another similar prompt, but with a different building. And again, it looks really realistic. And here I have a photo of me kayaking and I wanted a monster to emerge from the water. And it looks really realistic. It's got that kind of motion of the water splashing coming out and even the reflection of the monster. And here's another similar one, but with the monster coming out of the sand. It's not the best this one, but it's still pretty interesting. I even experimented with just boring everyday photos. So I took a photo of a mug that was on my table and I thought maybe I could get something to go in the mug in the video. So for this one, I put a man crawls out of the mug but it just kind of placed this weird kid into the mug. And this one looks awesome. All I put for the prompt was a fire in the mug and it looks insane. It's really interesting as it's actually put the fire inside the mug and it's not just like hovering over it. It's seen that there's a mug there. It knows the depth of it and it's even got some realistic lighting around it. And here's another one, but the prompt is mug fills up with lava. And it's just mind blowing as it's even filling up the cup with lava. It's incredibly smart how it knows there is a volume there and it needs to fill it up. And in this one, I put a creature crawls out of the mug, but instead it created this really creepy video of a weird little insect inside the mug. And it looks pretty realistic to be honest. It's kind of creepy. I actually took a photo of myself earlier in this spot and I wanted to see what it would do. So I put paint falls on the man's head and it did an awesome job of covering me in this blue paint. And again, you can see the physics and the liquid simulation are amazing, really. As it lands on my head, it even casts shadow onto my head. It's very, very impressive. Now let's have a look at different camera movements. So by inputting different camera movements into the prompt, you can get some wildly different looking videos. You can just type in camera zooms in to create a zoom in effect. You can do camera orbits to have the camera orbit around a subject. You can choose to pan or tilt your shots. You can include the words drone footage if you want the video to kind of fly over the subject. And you can get quite creative with it. I had this shot of a Formula One car. I wanted that kind of POV shot following the car and I got some really interesting results. I used a few different images and they all came out looking great. As you can see, it's created a really dynamic shot. I also used the word hyperspeed and fast motion into the prompt as well. 
Some of them are a bit weird, like in this one here, we've got a man steering the car, but he is kind of at the back right of the car. But you could easily just crop it in and get rid of that area of the video. And for this image, I wanted the camera to have that kind of first person view going down the street. So in the prompt, I included FPV, the camera flies into the painted city. And it did an incredible job. It's as if the person is walking down the street with a camera, which is exactly what I was looking for. Feel free to experiment with camera movements in your images as it can change the shot quite a lot. Now let's have a look at how well it works with people. So for this first shot, I wanted to test how well it works with someone walking. So I just used the image of this man standing in the street and I gave it no prompt just to see what it would do. And it generated a pretty good looking video. It's got a realistic walking motion, but it does look like he's mindlessly walking into traffic. I really like this light that's coming in from the shot. It adds that realistic kind of lens flare. It's got a really nice cinematic feel to it. And here I just wanted a simple slow motion shot of a woman with her hair blowing in the wind. And it looks incredible. It's not a hard shot to pull off to be honest, but it did a really good job at creating some natural movements with her hair. And it's added this really nice light lake into the shot. I wanted to test how well it works with people speaking, if you wanted to kind of make it look like someone's having a conversation. So I used this image of this man I generated in mid-journey, and I put into the prompt, the man is talking, he is speaking, the camera is stationary. And I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It's got a realistic talking animation to him. And the reason why I put he is talking and he is speaking in the prompt is I tried it once with he is talking and it didn't do anything. So sometimes it's good to kind of reiterate what action you want and say it maybe twice in the prompt. And I put camera is stationary as well because I just wanted it as a locked off shot as without this, it just kept it zooming in, which wasn't the look I was going for. Now let's have a look at how it works with different styles. I gave Runway one of my images from a story I created a while ago, which is a kind of CGI Pixar look. I gave it the prompt of a boy sitting down in his bedroom while sunlight shines through the window. Camera slowly zooms in. It did a really good job of kind of animating the character, but not too much, and adding in the sunlight coming in from the window. So I was pretty impressed with how this turned out. I've tried it with a few 2D images, so I've got this man standing up on a mountain, and I wanted his cape to blow in the wind. And it did a pretty good job. It would have been nicer if there was a bit more animation on the character, but you can always add that into the prompt if you want that. And here's a 2D image of a duck in a pond, and it's added some really nice subtle movement to the water. I also tried an image of an anime looking man, and I put in the prompt for him to talk, but it didn't do it. It just kind of zoomed into the shot. What you can do here if you want to add movement to the character's mouth, you can use the lip sync feature in Runway. And I did a test and it looks okay. Hi, how does this sound? Is my mouth moving at all? But as you can see, the lips don't quite look like they are cartoon lips, but it's not bad. Now let's have a look at animals and nature. I feel like with animal and nature images, this is where image to video works really well. As most of the examples I've used with animals and nature have this really realistic motion to them. So I actually created a really short video in a kind of nature documentary style, which I'll show you now. In the lush wetlands, a vibrant pink bird stands gracefully, its slender beak and intricate feathers catching the sunlight. A delicate marvel of avian adaptation, it is a striking presence against the natural backdrop. In the arid desert, a young fox-like creature with large ears and striking orange and white fur sits alert. Its delicate face is adorned with black markings and its ears swivel, capturing the slightest sounds. In a lush, vibrant habitat, we encounter an extraordinary sight. A flamingo, but not just any flamingo. This one is cloaked in brilliant blue plumage, a dazzling contrast to the verdant surroundings. So as you can see, it does a really good job at creating that natural movement with animals and it makes it look very realistic. So we've reached the end of this video and I hope you have learned some creative things to do with the image to video feature in Runway. It's not perfect, but there is some really fun things you can do with it. 
So I urge you to grab some of your photos and start creating some crazy looking videos with them. I think this will get much better once they add the motion brush feature into it as well, as then you'll be able to fine tune parts of your image and kind of move them to how you exactly want them. If you have any tips or tricks or prompts you want to share with the community, please leave them in the comment section down below. If you could give this video a like and subscribe to our channel, I would really appreciate that. And if you want to check out one of our other videos, feel free to click the image you can see on screen. Thanks for watching.